Welcome, welcome to this new video. This time we're going to be talking about running DHCP on the Meraki MX firewall. There are many reasons why you would like to run DHCP services on the MX or on any firewall. Um, one of the main reasons is because you don't have a dedicated DHCP server in your organization or perhaps your network is small enough that there's no need to have a DHCP server in the organization. So for those reasons and many other reasons, uh, you know, if you want, you can run DHCP on the Meragi MX. To get there, you would go to um, security and SD1, you go to DHCP, and obviously I'm on, I'm on that page already. And when you get here, you're gonna have the option of configuring DHCP to the different VLANs that you have on your configuration. As you can see here on this test environment, I have different VLANs. I have VLAN 1, VLAN 20, so on and so forth. And for each of those VLANs, I'm going to have the option of enabling or disabling DHCP uh, services for that VLAN. And uh, Meraki um, MX also gives you the option of configuring DHCP for routed networks on the MX, but uh, that is a more advanced configuration and for that you would need to um, configure a router or a layer 3 switch in front of the um, MX or between the MX and the clients and that layer 3 switch or router is going to be relaying the request to the MX and the MX is going to provide services to it. But we're not going to be talking about that configuration right at this moment. We'll be concentrating on the VLAN configuration. That is uh, one of the common ways of setting up a network or a simple way to setting up a network. So as you can see here on the uh, on the VLAN DHCP options, you have uh, the options right here, client addresses run DHCP server, and that is by default, but you can either select uh, relay DHCP to another server, and that is if you have a, um, a, a different server doing DHCP uh, requests or, or providing the uh, IP addresses, I'm sorry, uh, to clients. Uh, and that is a best practice, actually. Uh, most of the time, um, I don't like configuring DHCP services on the MX unless the network is small, small enough uh, for that. And it, it's not that the MX is not capable of handling large amount of DHCP, DHCP request. As a matter of fact, I believe that the largest um, subnet or that it can serve is slash 19. That is about 8,000 uh, uh, IP addresses that it can serve, right? So it's not that it's, it's a limitation of the MX. It's just a best practice solution. You would like to separate the services uh, out of the firewall if that's possible, right? Uh, so if, if that's the case, you could then set up a relay server. Of course, that relay server needs to be reachable by the MX in one way or another. Or you can set up the option of do not respond to the HTTP request. And obviously, if you do that, the, uh, the clients need to be uh, with the static IP addresses uh, so that they can connect. So um, let's have it on uh, run the HTTP. And as you can see here, you have the um, what we consider the norm uh, on any DHCP server. You have the least time, 30 minutes, an hour, one day, one week. Uh, then you have uh, the DNS uh, servers you want to use for that. You know, if you have Umbrella, go for that or, or Google Public DNS. Or you have the proxy upstream DNS, that's completely up to you. You have the common DHCP options that you can add to the scope. You have the, um, uh, the reservations if you want to reserve a, a range of IP addresses, you can do that right here or you can um, manually add uh, the um, 
IP addresses that you would like uh, the DHCP server to assign to the same client computer. <coughs> you can do that from here too. You would need the MAC address and the IP address that is going to be assigned to that client device. Uh, but something that may be useful to you and that uh, is a feature that I really like a lot is that if you go to the clients sections, where's my clients? Right here, right? Uh, so you would come, let's say that I come to this what box and it is connected as you could see here when I open the client settings and properties in the network section I see that it's getting an IP address uh, automatically from DHCP and you can change that to um, to fixed meaning that DHCP is always going to assign uh, th that IP address to that uh, host based on the MAC address and I save that and if I come here and I refresh this page you'll see that it's right here, right? It didn't print the name, but uh, but it added the setting. So that is a cool feature for you uh, to use and, and to have. Uh, let's go back to, okay, so we're here. And as you can see, you could do this for, for every uh, uh, VLAN that you have in your configuration uh, and you're ready to go. It's a simple configuration. It works fine. Uh, the only other thing that I would mention to you as, as a best practice is also to uh, to, to monitor your uh, configuration and you would do that from security and SD1. You go to uh, apply and status and right from here you're going to have the option of DHCP and you're going to see uh, how many uh, IP addresses you're using out of those um, that on the different VLANs on the different networks, you could see it by um, by number. You could see a percentage right here, based on how many you have available, and then right from here you're able to see the different clients um, uh, that you have in your DHCP server configuration. So uh, that's it. I mean, uh, Meraki does a pretty good job with DHCP. Um, it, it's a simple, it's a straight setup. And again, a best practice is, if possible, <laughs> run DHCP on a different server. And there are many reasons to do that too. Uh, you may want to maybe do some type of load balancing and in your configuration and, and you're not gonna be able to do that on, on the Meraki side. But if your network is flat, simple, or if you have just a straight setup, by all means, configure the HCP. You're going to have this running in a couple of minutes. So I hope, I hope this uh, video was useful to you and have a great day.